Hey guys, welcome to the Up Next podcast where we are interviewing teen entrepreneurs that are making it big time in the startup world. We are asking the questions we know you want to hear. Up Next is an app made for teens where anyone can join or build a real life startup. So today we have Aram Barnett. He is 24, currently in the US. He is the co founder of. Powerboard, which is turning any game into an esport by providing the data, infrastructure, and platform for players to t- and teams to organize and compete against each other. And he is currently working on something new, which is called Benabits. It is a cryptocurrency benefit platform, which we will hear a lot more about. Aram has been working um, in this industry since he was 15. How did you find yourself creating such a business? What sparked the idea? You know, when I first started the company, uh, I was working at Human Ventures as an entrepreneur in residence. It was just something that I was working on the side saying like, hey, it'd be really cool to have all my data in one place, the original thesis. Uh, Fast forward to February, March 2020 and the pandemic hit, now all stuck inside. Uh, me and my friends are playing on Discord and we're all talking smack with each other about who's the best Call of Duty. You know, we had the original build of Powerboard and it's like, huh, well, what if we were able to go and compare our stats against each other um, in a localized leaderboard? Little shift here, here, and it's like, all right, boom, here's like your Powerboard. It really, it was renamed from CoCal to Powerboard, being able to go and show your stats. People just started checking out our friends, started inviting their friends. And then, you know, I realized really quickly that it's like, oh, you know, there's something that is of value here, which uh, it's kind of, you know, how we got started. Um, We're in our second year now, still trying to, you know, chase that elusive product market fit, but it seems like this stuff is going pretty well. How much time did it take for you to build the product that you launched? From where it is today, um, that took, honestly, it, it only took a couple of months, I'd say five to six months. But getting to that point was like a two year journey in itself. And we're still not even like there yet. Um, just through the iterations of what could work, concepts and such. Um, you know, it was a really good exercise for me on getting to MVP, which is something that is it's very easy for people to say, oh, get to MVP, very, very hard to implement. Um, uh, <laughs> I feel like, you know, instead of going through like this two year cycle of iterating, iterating, which all, all startups will do it, right? If I had just a little more clear vision or getting the product out just a little more out to people, we would have iterated a lot faster. What are three traits that you look for in a co-founder, business partner type of person? Execution, tenacity, and then positive attitude. Cause this stuff sucks, right? Like uh, being a founder is no fun. Could you name one advantage and one disadvantage of being such a young entrepreneur? I think the big advantage is that, you know, you can take really big risk and it's not going to hurt you, which is great. Where it's like, hey, you know, you can do stuff. You can put, you know, you can put yourself out there. And if you fail, um, you know, you would have learned a ridiculous amount. The, the biggest dis- disadvantage, right? It's, um, you know, having to learn stuff yourself firsthand. Um, and then not learning from somebody else. Granted, you know, you can go and make up that deficit by reading a bunch of resources. There's a bunch of different programs for you get into, you know, uh, being able to go and seek out mentors to go and, you know, drive you uh, in the right direction is also incredibly important. What is a tech tool that you just can't go without? Maybe an app or a website, something that you always use? Oh, Webflow. Webflow is amazing. Yeah, I think Webflow is great just for low code tool for you to like throw up a site and it gets pretty powerful because you can integrate like JavaScript stuff. Um, I love that website. Uh, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, and then, goodness, notes. It's something that I've really been trying to wean myself off of because it's like I've got a bunch of notes there. It'd be so much better if I had those things from, like Notion or just put everything in Trello. Which entrepreneurs inspire you the most these days? Who do you have your eye on? So Vernon Coleman over at Real Time, um, uh, just the product that he's been able to build is super sick. Um, you know, because he's like comes from like backcountry South Carolina, right? Uh, and I think he like really challenges the notion that you have to be in Silicon Valley. Uh, you know, like I really love that. You know, I get inspiration from him a lot. Um, and then Marlon Wayne who has built one of my favorite applications that I use every day. 
Um, uh, highly recommend if you have an iPhone, there's no reason why you shouldn't have it. It's called Ask Impulse. And so Ask Impulse is a survey app, right? Uh, and it's just like Tinder's interface where you swipe left, swipe right, but it's like 10 questions asked by brands. So let's say it's, um, uh, but you do the survey and then you get randomly selected to win whatever the survey is about. Which trait of yours do you feel is your weakest and you need to outsource it somehow with a coworker or maybe a tech platform? Great question. And I'm like, I've constantly been thinking about this a lot to the point where I might actually go and like, I'm definitely, I'm taking courses around this and it's, uh, it's on the product side, right? That scope creep and like, I will take full responsibility. It's usually my fault, right? Where I have a vision, I'm like, all right, you know, it took, you know, it takes a while to get to an iPhone, right? Like I can't just like, oh, we get an iPhone and build up, build up, build up, right? Um, having a product manager as like employee number one, because like developing is now like a lot easier, right? Um, you can stand up like a Bank of America style application with like five lines of code now, right? It's gotten pretty cool. Um, but for me, you know, being able to have like, you know, the, you know, the product sense of being very rigid to go boom, 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 is something that I have been like certainly lacking on, right? That's uh, I, I take full responsibility um, for that. What single piece of advice do you have to give to those who are listening and looking to be in your place? I would say spend some time to really think through like what you actually need to get this thing off of the ground. Um, and then use your young age to your advantage. Um, most of the time, a lot of companies have like, oh, stuff is free for um, students, right? Um, or like people will take time with you because you're young to have like one-on-one -on -one sessions or have mentorship, right? So you could probably save that $100. I'm a crypto guy, so I'd be like throwing it to Bitcoin. But <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, I, 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 you know, reaching out, like finding the companies that you need, right? Like Webflow is like, like, I think like $24 a month. I'm sure you can reach out to somebody on that team. Um, or like, you know, Figma and be like, Hey, I'm in high school. I'm in college. Uh, can I have like, you know, like free credits to use this to get my startup off the ground? And I guarantee they're going to say yes. Um, AWS, right. If you're in school, you know, they have different programs. They'll just give you $1,500 in Amazon, uh, web service credits just for saying like, Oh, you're a startup, right. Just not even talking. And if you get to an accelerator, it'll give you a hundred thousand dollars in AWS credits. Pretty, pretty important. Um, it's gotten so cheap to launch a business now like it's it, it's really really something else right i think when i was first starting off right you know you had to either build stuff from scratch or it's like hey you know stuff like pretty expensive stuff has come down significantly like you could probably launch a shopify store with like that hundred dollars right maybe even less than that and just start generating revenue like day zero um which is a uh, you know pretty big uh to say so you know use that hundred dollars to go buy somebody a cup of coffee um, to go and talk with them. Um, <laughs> or, uh, and then just like start emailing people, be on Twitter. You know, most of the time we're already on our phones anyway. Uh, and so take your time, go build a list of the people, of the companies that you need to work with or like what you need. Um, and then go and like just stalk these people on LinkedIn or hit them up on Twitter uh, and or just email them. Just get really good at uh, cold emailing people. And just shoot them a message and say, okay, I'd buy you a cup of coffee if you take this time with me. Or, hey, do you have any like credits um, that I could go and use to go and build up? How important do you feel it is for young entrepreneurs to think about social change when creating a business? Pretty, I think it's pretty important, right? Like social change. And I'm still wrapping my head around you know, what, how I define social, right? And what social impact is. You know, I you know, worked at, you know, a company uh, thinking about like building social impact stuff. And I like first couple months didn't even know what social impact meant. Right. I'm like, oh, you know, we got to like save the whales or something like that. Like, what, what does that mean? Right. Um, but I think, you know, social impact is literally like, how do you make the lives of other people better or a lot easier? Um, and you would assume that's the goal for every single product. Um, you know, whoever it might be. I can't think of one product that makes someone's life harder that sells, right? <laughs> um, so I, I think, you know, from that like impact side of things, I think inherently that's the goal of every single uh, company that you start, right? You know, having some sort of impact. I think, you know, you know, extrapolating from that question, if you're looking at like the higher like 
impact on what it means for society. Um, you know, the old Google method, uh, old Google model was like, do no evil. Um, I think that uh, still kind of like reigns true. Um, yeah, at least think through like the ramifications of what you are building. Um, I mean, like who Mark Zuckerberg probably didn't think that, you know, Facebook would, you know, like cause swings in elections, right? Uh, but I'm sure it's pretty important to think about those things. Um, and I don't think, you know, you know, you should necessarily shut something down based off of like, you know, the long term what ifs, but keeping it in the back of your mind and saying like, all right, cool, is this going to hurt more people and it actually helps? Um, and being a little more ethical. Um, you know, I think that also comes with time and then like talking with, uh, with mentors and people. Um, I certainly think that younger people, <laughs> like Gen Z, us, right, um, certainly have a better like mindset on like the ethical ramifications and things, like being a little more socially conscious. Um, and so I think our products are now starting to reflect that a little bit more. Uh, and so I, I think it, it's certainly worth some time just to have like, hey, what are the ethical and societal ramifications of this? Because your product can have social impact, but make sure it's a positive one, right? You know, we can go build out a massive weapon right now, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be a big impact or not. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, I think that would be my two cents. Uh, like I said, I'm no expert when it comes to uh, social impact. Um, and so I don't necessarily know if I would stand by that answer. If you could have any superpower in the world, what would you pick? I think having super intelligence would be very, you know, very interesting um, power to have. Um, where having super intelligence, I'd be able to do a lot of really cool things, fold proteins in my head and be like, oh, this is the cure for cancer, leave me alone. Rob, it was great getting to know you and what you do. I'm sure that we will hear a lot more about um, the cryptocurrency platform next time we talk. Wonderful chatting with you and thank you for the opportunity to uh, you know, join your podcast. Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to say if you love what's going on, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give a like, turn on your notifications, comment, do all that good stuff. We are uploading so much content all the time, so I will see you guys soon.